Hello, welcome to this video tutorial on using ResiPy for 2D inversion. Today I'm just going to pick out a example that we have in our repository, which is a Cisco file, and there's a bit of topography associated with this. So, uh, I'm going to select the file type, which is called Cisco in this case, and pick it from my file explorer. And now we have a pseudo section of that data loaded in. Um, I'm also just going to set what the electrode locations are. Okay, good. And for anyone wondering what the format of the CSV file is, in this case it's just three columns, uh, X, Y, and Z. Now the Z column is actually what defines your topography. Uh, the Y column is all zero because it's a 2D line, so it doesn't change. And the X column is, of course, our distance along the ground. And now I just want to take a look at the pre-processing tab. So first we have uh, a repeat of our pseudo section. Uh, but this time we actually have the ability to pick out individual measurements which we think might be erroneous. And you can remove them with this apply filters button. You can also reset the data here as well. Now clicking on the electrodes actually gives you the chance to uh, remove individual electrodes as well. Uh, say if you have a survey where you think you have a, a erroneous electrode then you can also filter that here. Essentially what we're trying to aim for here is an air probability distribution that looks normal. So it follows a kind of one hump in the middle. Now with this data we also have reciprocals, which means that we have measurements taken with current electrodes and potential electrodes in one place, and then we've taken the same measurement again but with the current electrodes and potential electrodes reversed. And the theory of reciprocity states that the measurement should be the same, uh, as the measurement should be sensitive to the same portion of ground. So any variation from this is going to give us an idea of the error associated with that measurement. What we can do here is actually fit a, an error model. What RISIPI does is it bins all the data and then fits an error model to that. So we've got a couple of options, a linear uh, model, but you can see that this is sort of tailing off at this end. A lot of the time a linear error um, model will be appropriate though. Or we can use a power law model, which is what I'm going to use here because that seems to fit these data points a bit better. So the inversion when taking the error model forward will put more weight on uh, measurements with a lower reciprocal error. You can go ahead and create a mesh. Now for 2D inversion you have a couple of options with ResiPy. You can either use a quadrilateral mesh, uh, which is simpler, or you can also use a triangular mesh, um, which often does a better job at simulating more complicated topography and certain st structures in the subsurface. But another benefit of a triangular mesh is it's actually more efficient to process. Next thing to have a quick look at is inversion settings. Most of these can be left uh, at their default values. Um, one thing you might want to look at is the maximum number of iterations. If you have a particularly complicated problem, it may well take more than 10 iterations to converge on a stable solution, in which case you'd want to increase this number. Now, if it's the case that your data does not have reciprocals, you can modify the amount of error associated with each measurement with these A and B weight values. Uh, another option you may also want to look at is the sensitivity matrix. So here we've set to calculate a sensitivity matrix. This basically tells us where our inversion is most sensitive to. Now you can calculate a true resolution matrix, however this takes a very long time to compute. Okay, now we've just got the inversion tab. All right, and now we have our final inverted model, and we can start to make some interpretation about what's going on here. 
One thing just to consider is looking at this post processing tab. And what you'll see here is a pseudo section which is showing you normalized errors. And we have this sort of inner graph form here. Uh, it's a measurement number along the x axis. What we're looking for is all the measurements to fall between plus and minus three. And this shows us that we have uh, an inversion which is fitting the data reasonably well. Okay, uh, so that's all from me for now. Uh, thanks for watching this video tutorial.